approaching my mark, my, uh, my fishing mark uh, on the GPS where I want to drop the anchor. So we've just got to get the pack, pack into position, just taking into account the direction of the tide. Okay, just approaching the right spot now. The great thing about having the GPS and the waypoints is in the past this used to be a guessing game for me. I just used to use, use the landmarks uh, and the compass to locate, locate where I wanted to fish. Uh, but with the, with the, the GPS and the, and the marine charts that's made that process a lot easier. All right, so I've got the I've got the grapnel anchor unfolded uh, and locked down. And <clears throat> I'm in position, so down we go. Okay, I'm down. Now there's a general rule. Um, of uh, the amount of line that you let out when you anchor a car anchor. And that general rule is three times the depth of the water. However, from my experience, um, that's not a set rule. Uh, it, it depends on the strength of the tide, uh, where you're actually anchoring, anchoring and uh, the wind strength. Now this particular spot where I fish, um, there's very, very, uh, very, very small, there's not much of a tide race. Therefore, I don't have to stick to that rule three times the length. And uh, as you can see today, um, it's very, very calm. So from experience at this particular mark, um, I really only, only let out uh, probably about uh, double uh, the length, uh, the depth of the water. Um, the other thing you need to take into account is uh, at the moment, I'm in 90, uh, about 94 feet of water, and uh, it's the ebb tide and that will drop down to about 75 feet um, and then I'm going to fish probably two or three hours of the flood tide um, and obviously I need enough line out to, to take into account the rise and the fall of the water. So three times the depth is a general rule um, and it certainly would apply in uh, very strong tidal areas such as maybe the Bristol Channel um, but uh, generally in the areas that I fish it doesn't apply and probably that rule and even stronger tides would probably be more than three times the depth so my advice would be um, is to, if you're fishing in a strange area and you want to drop anchor, is to seek advice from other kayakers that fish that area and drop anchor in that area. Um, or um, experiment uh, by trial and error yourself. Okay, so um, I've got this anchor down, I've got enough uh, line out, um, so what I'm going to do is just clip it onto the anchor trolley now, um, which I've got beside me. Flip it on and then I'm going to manoeuvre it, manoeuvre the anchor trolley so, the anchor, so I'm anchored from the stern. And the kayak is swinging around now nicely and at the moment um, I've got the tide running from my, from my stern to my bow. So hopefully when I get the rods out um, They'll, uh, they'll both, and there's not much wind to, to interfere with the interfere with that. Um, so when I get the rods out, hopefully the lines will go nicely down tied. The other thing you have to consider um, when dropping the anchor, you've let the line out, is because the tide's going to change. Um, and so when you're anchored over a, a, a particular fishing mark, um, at the moment on the ed, on, uh, on the ebb, but uh, in about three hours' time, the tide the tide will will turn and I'll start swinging the other way. So um, I've tried to calculate for that because uh, most of my fishing is going to be this afternoon. So when it swings, it will swing me um, um, sort of more clo closer to the mark that I, that I want to be over. But I have found at times that you do have to, you do have to up anchor 
and uh, re reposition the reposition the kayak uh, to stay to stay close to to the mark you want to fish. From the point of view of uh, fishing at anchor on a kayak, I've got absolutely the perfect scenario here. Um, the tide uh, is turned now, I'm fishing the flood tide, and I've got the wind and the tide in exactly the same direction. Um, there, therefore, that makes it much, very, very easy to fish one rod, I'm fishing bait on the bottom at the moment, one rod either side of the kayak, and both lines going down tide, running down tide beautifully, uh, with the anchor, the anchor deployed at the stern. However, the problem is uh, that doesn't always happen and sometimes you can get uh, the worst scenario is when you get the wind in the totally the opposite direction to the tide or the wind across the tide and, and then you get the, get the kayak um, uh, sort of swinging sideways and if you try and fish two rods um, you know you get to, it's fine with the one rod but you get the one line sort of running, running across and it's all a bit awkward. Um, two things I've found you can do uh, when you get that situation is either you can use the uh, the drogue, a drift shoot, and um, um, put that out. And what I've got, I've got uh, the, the anchor deployed on one side of the kayak, and I've got a, a second anchor trolley, half anchor trolley on the other side of the kayak, which uh, I can use to put out the drogue. And um, what that does, uh, that uh, an underwater parachute, it picks up. It picks up the tide uh, in a wind over tide situation and tends to pull the, the bow of the kayak in more in the direction uh, of the tide, making it easier to fish two rods. The other thing you can do is, uh, if you don't want to use a drift shoot when you've got a bit of a, a wind over tide situation, is actually um, fish two rods on, on one side of the kayak. Um, depending on which way the wind, uh, wind is coming from, you can uh, have the anchor deployed at the stern and, uh, or at the bow um, and, and fish two rods, uh, two rods both on one side of the kayak. So there are, there are ways around it, um, um, but it's absolutely beautiful uh, when anchoring. If you do get this situation I've got today, uh, with the wind and the tide in exactly the same direction, it makes, it makes life much, much easier. Okay, I'm ready to retrieve the anchor now. Um, when I uh, first started using uh, an anchor, uh, when I pulled the, uh, pulled the anchor line in, I used to pass the, the slack over the other side of the kayak and keep doing that until, the, until I got the anchor up. But what I found is that caused a bit of a problem because the, uh, all the slack sort of drifted out in the tide and when it came to reeling it onto the SMB reel um, it could get in a bit of a tangle. So now what I do is do it a bit of a bit of time is pull a, pull a bit in and then trap the line you can see there, trap the line uh, with my foot on the foot rest and then take up the slack on the SMB reel and then pull a bit more in, trap it with the foot on the foot rest and, uh, and reel it on and, and do it bit by bit that way. Um, I find uh, that way I get in uh, much uh, less tangles with getting the line back onto the SMB reel. Okay so you just pull, pull, a, pull some in and then it's trap it with your foot uh, on the SMB reel uh, with your foot on the foot rest of the kayak and then take up the slack uh, on the SMB reel and just basically take your time and then again pull in a bit more line trap it with your foot on the foot rest and then take up the slack on the SMB reel. And just keep repeating that process until the anchor's up. Trap it with the foot, take up the slack. And I say, just keep doing that until you get the anchor up. Okay, I hope you found that useful, anchoring a kayak at sea. There's, and there was a few tips and pointers there for your own kayak fishing. I'm going to carry on uh, doing some fishing now on the drift, only this time I'm going to be using a different anchor and that's a uh, drift shoot which I've got off the bow there. So I'm going to carry on and do a bit of fishing, um, so thanks for watching and I uh, hope you found that useful.